Welcome to Lux Audience Award channel. Uh, Lux Audience Award is uh, presented by the European Parliament every year. It celebrates European cinema and aims to raise awareness about social, political and cultural issues in Europe. I'm Franz Malmsten, I'm an Estonian actor and director and here today we are celebrating the nomination of Lux Audience Award for uh, Smoke Sauna Sisterhood, directed by Anna Hintz. Hey, hey congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you so welcome. much. Welcome. Nice to meet you in Brussels. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tere. <laughs> tere, tere. We are Estonians, but we haven't never talked uh, outside, uh, inside Estonia. In, we are always met outside of Estonia somehow. No, Being inside est Estonia also, oh. but only in interviews. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's our second uh, chat, and it's also an interview. Yes. yes. Wow, lovely. <laughs> First time for me. So, uh, thank you for the film. I really, really loved it. I had the honor to watch it in cinema with the Estonian uh, audience and I felt how the audience, when the movie ended, that no one uh, stood up to go away, but what mm. they took it in, in, in mm. themselves. It was really... Uh, me, as a director, this is the thing what I would love to mm. see. Mm. And it was really beautiful. Thank you. But, um, Documentary is often made by lucky chance and director's job is to make the lucky chance as possible as it gets. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for this film? Yeah, I totally agree with, um, with this uh, process, like approach to process is so important. Uh, when we talk about films, it's not just like what stories we're into, what themes we're into, but how we make films. And I can really say that the whole process of Smoke Sauna Sisterhood was built on trust mm -hmm. and very actually different from many things that was taught to me in film school. For example, um, I, um, you know, this is about vulnerability. Um, women go there into the smoke sauna, they take their physical clothes off, but they also take their emotional clothes off. And how to hold the space and how to make them feel safe also in the film mm -hmm. uh, shooting um, time. So that actually started from uh, the moment when I approached them. So it started with a, a sisterhood that I'm also part of, um, my friends. And I had a rule for myself that I will not persuade anyone. I will not convince anyone. And that's, for example, something that, at least for me, was taught in film school, like, oh, you should seduce, you know, your mm -hmm. subject. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, I was like, no, because the whole film is emphasizing on giving space, safe space, for um, the sisterhood to share their voices. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to oppose my voice on them. so. I, was, uh, I met them and then I um, just was very open about the intimacy that I'm looking after. Basically, they all knew it was like, okay, we go to the depth, you know, and I'm like, yeah, we go to the depth, are you in or not? And only those who were like, yes, um, I'm in, then we continued. And when I felt that there was some um, hesitation, then for me it was no. I didn't pursue, I didn't like start to persuade. Uh, that was the one very important part. The second thing is that um, um, usually then um, production brings legal papers uh, when somebody says yes and you sign them. Um, but in our case, it was like inviting these women to be naked in smoke saunas, body and soul, and signing something already before it's filmed. It didn't make sense to me. It was like about the process where I felt no miracles would happen like that because, you know, people would be so self-conscious thinking about what they say or it would not be the real experience. And I cannot, like, uh, take their voices away like this. So uh, this vision was shared by my producer, Marianne Ostrat, and we took huge risk and basically had agreement that only in the post-production, when I already have a cut uh, to show, I will show it to the women separately and they have the right to say yes or no. And this, uh, everyone who has done film, you know, knows mm -hmm. that it's huge risk. I made huge. the film seven years and they could have said no, but nobody said no because the whole process was so, um, you know, like including their voices. So these things um, uh, were important part of what you ask, like how the miracles could happen, like how we make films. Um, I couldn't imagine doing a film about vulnerability or safe space uh, while 
being manipulative or being, um, you know, not safe in the shooting. So as a director, it was a huge responsibility, I knew from the start, to make this kind of film. It's not just like that, oh, we do a shooting and then it's bye-bye, but it's um, the whole, to be there for the sisterhood throughout the process, till, till post-production, till distribution. And um, I can say from that experience that um, it is possible to make bold, intimate, uh, powerful films with empathy, with including your subjects, or how you call it in English, you know, with whom you make the film with, and kind of like in a form of circle, like this circle here, like, you know, European <laughs> Union <laughs> circle, that um, we don't need to oppose and, you know, our voices, but how to create together with the voices. And the other challenge is that, you know, um, I, my background is in photography also, I have a degree in photography and I'm very aware that wherever you take out camera, mm -hmm. camera is never objective, yep. camera is always subjective, always as a glance. So for me the big challenge was that I'm going to film naked female bodies. And even though the nakedness inside Smoke Sauna is nothing sexual, you know, we are there, everybody has the right to exist there, sweat there, uh, we sweat together, we pee together, we bleed together. But at the same time, in society, naked female bodies are so sexualized. We're so used to seeing female representation in sexual form. So how to make sure that that non-sexual glance comes also to the film? So for that, me and the cinematographer Hans Stammik, we did uh, tests first on my own body mm -hmm. in smoke sauna, finding the language and also finding th uh, this language or the visual language where I felt safe and then I showed it to the women so that was also part of the process I showed it to the women and they felt safe and then we were including who wanted to show their face who didn't want to show their face so also their voices came into the visual representation and um, and all this was um, you know part of that process that made the miracles happen. No, not only actually, also the technically, because we were filming in hot, real hot smoke sauna. Moist, uh, moist sauna. Moist, you know, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, hey, let's shoot a film. It's really small, yeah. dark place, usually some 80 degrees or more temperature, uh, 80 degrees Celsius, and you know, there's a lot of water and uh, no electricity. It's like nightmare. And there were several people cinematographers who told me that it's not really possible mm -hmm. to shoot in real hot smoke sauna. But again, it comes to like how you find your teammates, how you find those people who support your vision and find solutions. And I really have to congratulate um, Anz Stammik and, and Anz found those ways. Um, so in order to capture those miracles that were happening in front of us in smoke sauna, uh, technology had to be there ready. So while heating up the smoke sauna, because you heat smoke sauna before, it has no chimney and you heat it like six to eight hours before, uh, while we put fire into the oven of smoke sauna, we also put inside the uh, smoke sauna on the floor um, camera uh -huh. and lenses. And the other lenses were outside because you're like inside smoke sauna, then you go out, you come back, you cannot do it with the same lens. Uh -huh. And then after two hours, we put this camera and lenses more up Mm. more up, more up, so they adjusted to the heat. Then while filming uh, around the camera, there were ice packs, and uh, not just regular ice packs, because they melt, so they had to be like strong plastic. And and Anz had wet cloths dripping on uh, head, and, and gloves, and you know, um, cloth around the body, because camera gets, is metallic and burns you. And so we had to be ready technically, emotionally uh, to capture those miracles. And also important is that everything you hear is happening and is, is like there in front of camera first time. Um, I hold the space so that, um, that before entering smoke sauna, I was making sure that we don't talk about what we're gonna talk about in smoke sauna. So you enter there and then the smoke sauna miracle starts mm -hmm. to happen. 
and how to be ready there to capture it. And when the camera says, sorry, I need to breathe, and then you don't capture, but the process goes on and then new miracles come. But uh, as I can uh, see, you were also in the sauna yeah, yeah, with them yeah. all the time. No, not all the time. Not all the time, but uh, uh, the T.O.P. was always there on stomach. Or yes, you all... but sometimes there were also moments when I remember rarely where, uh, for example, camera needed to breathe mm -hmm. and uh, the only sound recordist was filming. I was, was uh, not filming, recording. Recording. Because the camera, let's say, started needed a break, but uh, the direction was that we don't break the flow of smoke no. sound. All right, yeah. yeah. But how did um, the woman's... Uh, Mm. Uh, get used to the cameraman and to the mic man mm -hmm. as well. Was it like a process as well? It started from this um, visual, um, visual uh, what I was describing before, yeah. so we can cut that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, um, this challenge, that uh, visually challenge that, yep. uh, that I had. Um, so finding this, um, finding uh, we, the safe, uh, language, yeah, like really taking it. time with uh, aunts to find the visual language for the film and then testing it, uh, showing the material yeah. based on my body where they felt safe and then including who wanted to show their face, who didn't want to show their face and then when we did, the, I remember the first shooting where with, there was aunts the and women, yeah, yeah. then um, I later separately asked each of them mm -hmm. how was it Okay. and they felt safe. They totally were like, ah, oh, we're very, very, we felt very safe. Did someone say that it was weird or No, everyone? I think it is because the whole process, uh, it started, it's really like from this small components from the start that asking, being honest as a director, what mm -hmm. you are looking for. The and, trust. And trust, yes, and they ready to be in the film. Um, and that's the thing, because I didn't pursue, uh, convince anyone to be in the film. Um, so who did, who were not ready, they were not in the film, and who were ready, they were ready and their voices were um, included, mm -hmm. like, who, you know, didn't want to show their face. Who, yeah. And, but there was, yeah, there was trust and, and they saw the language and they saw that this visual language is Acceptable. respectful. Yep. It's respectful, it's, uh, it's non-sexualizing and they felt safe. They sel uh, felt safe while watching the material and also inside the room. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, the film talks about ritual. Uh, yeah. How uh, important uh, is ritual in your life? Mm. Very important, I think. Um, also, I am born into the smoke sauna culture. Mm. So, um, in my case, it was my granny uh, from South East Estonia who was passing on rituals, passing on the heritage. And it's... Um, something very natural to me, you know? It's like, I remember when there is spirits time we have like in uh, late autumn, we mm -hmm. think uh, we think we believe um, as it's um, dead ancestors come to visit us. So I remember, for example, how granny was putting the uh, table for uh, the food, with the food for us, having dinner, and then also including like dead ancestors in, in the table. And it was something very natural. Mm -hmm. So the ritual is, uh, something that is integrated in my life. And I myself go to smoke sauna regularly. And I actually cannot even imagine my life without it, you know. And, and it's really about this creating this kind of safe space where you're really being heard and seen. And it doesn't mean that we have to, you know, pray to the same God or choose the same party. Uh, no, we can have different viewpoints, but we are in that kind of safe space where we give respect to each other, and give respect to each other's voices, and really hear each other out, and really share. And that kind of space, um, I've never experienced anywhere but in smoke sauna. And I wanted to really um, like transform that experience of real smoke sauna into the cinema hall and share it with humanity because I believe this this kind of safe space belongs not just into a small, small spot in southeast Estonia but to 
to humanity. And now when I'm traveling with this film really all over the world and there is like such heartwarming responses, and people opening up after the film and, and sharing their stories and, and like it changes them, you know, and it gives them like experience for, for many, just first time in their lives for this kind of safe space then it tells me um, the deep need and the deep lack of this kind of safe spaces, yeah. yeah. Uh, you said that um, in one interview you did in Estonia that you had to follow your gut feeling a mm -hmm. lot in this film. Yeah. Uh, that there were many, I don't know, was it producers or mm -hmm. who said that there's no faces, you are, no one's going to watch this film. <laughs> How did you fight with these kind of responses? <laughs> Because now everyone is watching. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> um, no, not my producer. My yeah. producers, uh, there were two producers. Yep. First producer, Eva Talvisto, and then um, he unfortunately died. And then uh, Marianne Austrat came on board. They both supported me and have been supporting me. Uh, but um, it was uh, when we first asked money for the film, okay. then, you know, the committee um, uh, rejected and, and, and was doubtful many things where they were doubtful and like it didn't make sense yeah like how it will be visual who cares about the small uh, story like very local story that it will not have any uh, international um, mm -hmm. flights that was like i remember and also like who would watch a film without uh, faces and you know all these things and um and yes um, uh, one thing that i've learned um through the seven years of making this film is it's interesting because it's a film about voices, giving mm -hmm. space to voices, but also learned that like, the most important as a director is that initial voice inside me. That is like, you know, that kind of light or that kind of pull that I have to follow. And um, I have actually a story with that. So um, the concrete idea for the film came from a monastery where I was with my mother. Uh, we were doing um, 26 days of retreat, of silence retreat. Wow. And in that 26 days, I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't speak, of course. And in that silence, I started to notice uh, voices inside me, that there are these voices inside me, and I started to question, like, okay, who, does, who, does, who do these voices belong to? Um, where is my voice? Am I even aware of my voice? And... Um, also, I noticed many voices that were silenced, you know, like from generations ago. And this voice became like such important, like element. And, and then the idea came, like voice and the smoke sauna space, putting it together. And uh, then I uh, felt so strong that, you know, came the vision for the film and I wanted to write it down, but I couldn't. And then I went to the lady monk, to whom you could go to when you had something very important to ask. So I went to her and I was like, please, can I write it down? I have the vision for the film and it's like so strong in me, but I'm afraid that I will lose it. I will lose this idea. And especially when I have like half the way to go in here in the monastery. And she was like, no, no, no. Wow. You came here with a determination to be silent 26 days. You cannot write, you know the rules, but if it is important, if it's really important, it will stay with you. And actually she uh, taught me a really important lesson and now I'm using it as a method that when there is this kind of initial idea, you know, you feel like some idea is being born, I don't immediately write it down. I keep it mm -hmm. and I check after some time, is it still inside mm -hmm. me? And in that way I test that voice inside me and that voice is that intuition. And I also realized that in the film, making there are those moments where just people around you don't see what you see and you at those moments when there are these voices around you who tell you how to do you just have to keep keep that contact with that voice and then find those people who support your voice mm -hmm. for whom it makes sense and coming back to now seven years, like we premiered in Sundance 2023 um, and, and I won the Best Director Award and then the jury came to me after that and the head of the jury and he pointed out several strong things um, 
in that film that he saw and like wow that strong that you made these decisions as a director and they were really the same points wow as in the beginning i got rejection for and i think it tells something about the process mm -hmm. of filmmaking and how you know we should we should always just keep that contact with our voice yep. and there are challenges yeah there are really challenges but that is like the most precious thing mm -hmm. mo most precious guide and how to first get connected with that deep drive that deep need that deep voice and then listen to that and and uh, there isn't like in film schools often they teach certain way of how to make films and I've also understood there is not one way how to make films there is not one way to be a film director um, we all have to find that our way our um, word our yes. voice our yeah. voice yes our voice, yes yeah, yeah. You've been very successful, as you just said, Sundance Film Festival, a loads of festivals around the, around the globe, actually. How, what's next? It, <laughs> now it's like, do you have to jump over your own shadow? <laughs> how can you jump? How, how, do you, mm -hmm. how do you feel right now about this one? Um, there is not one day when somebody uh, um, does not ask. They ask yeah. me, like, what is next? What is next? What do you do? And uh, if I could just listen to these voices, mm -hmm. I would be super stressed, yep. anxious, yeah. and possibly come up with something very mediocre because I would want to please or please, please them or, yep. you know, like follow their expectations. And I think this is very big trap. Mm -hmm. I feel every time we start a new film, we are like starting in a way from ground zero. Yep. And uh, for me, it's so important to have that courage to create that freedom inside and for that when I start the creation process I work really with my mind not to think about any result I really don't think about yeah. any festival uh, I think the key for me is to be ready to totally fail I want to put my mind and this is what I do I put my mind ready to totally fail yep. because only then I have that creative freedom and um, it's not point to make something that you've already done. So it's a journey and then... I totally I, agree yeah. with you, absolutely. <laughs> I have always followed the same path actually, yeah. to allow myself to, fail, to, be, a, to be a failure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. it really have helped me because the same way you said, you can then be free with your uh, mm -hmm. imaginations and uh, mm -hmm. the things you want to do. So there is going to be smoke, sauna, brotherhood. <laughs> I think, yeah, <laughs> the people want it. <laughs> I've heard that many guys have uh, started yes. uh, smoke sauna brotherhood uh, yes. groups. I don't know. Yeah, that is so interesting. When a uh, film came out in Estonia, then um, uh, there was, um, uh, I got four, I remember, like four emails um, about proposition to make smoke sauna brotherhood. <laughs> and also a lot of, men were, were giving feedback that why is it so that they go to sauna or smoke sauna and they avoid intimacy mm. and vulnerability and um, how some said that, you know, we talk about the bullshit, not about yep. the real shit. And um, then I encouraged them to be the first courageous one to open up, to really express how they're feeling and um, and now I'm yeah, so happy that there are this kind of like some I know at least some brotherhoods, uh, smoke sauna brotherhoods that started. Um, there are ideas in my mind uh, connected with the pressure for male gender to mm -hmm. be a certain way, um, um, and probably it will come into my films also, but not the same way as yeah. smoke sauna sisterhood. So because it doesn't make sense. To absolutely. Make the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so talk about the real shit. That <laughs> yes. is the lesson. Yes. So thank you, Anna. Uh, thank do you, you have anything you want to say to the audience in the camera behind the screens? Hmm. I want to say maybe this, that, you know, there are so many 
Mm, so many challenges that we as humanity are facing. And often when we are outside from smoke sound or outside from our safe space, um, we might feel that there is not possible to come together as humans. But for me, the experience of making that film and also traveling with that film and all the feedback that I get and the real powerful experiences that I have with the audience, they give me a lot of hope. Uh, hope that we can connect as humans on heart level with each other so that there is that humanhood and that humanhood we can be in that humanhood very different. We are very different. We don't need to pray to the same God. Uh, we don't need to vote for the same party. We can have totally opposite opinions, but still we can respect each other's voices and really hear each other out and be connected through that humanity. So I hope and to encourage with that film um, to create this kind of safe spaces and where we can be heard and seen. And much love to all of you. <laughs> thank you. Much love to you as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please uh, rate your favorite at uh, looksavard.eu. And if you haven't seen the film, you can find the screenings on the, on the same page. So visit looksavard.eu. Until next time, and please, let's respect others. <laughs>